right, good evening everybody. Welcome to By His Blood Ministries Bible Study. I pray that everyone's having a good day today. Uh, also pray that, uh, that everyone has good days for the rest of the week. Uh, 7 o'clock, so let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and to study your Holy Word, Lord. Lord, may we see the things that you want us to do. May we follow the examples that you put before us, Lord. May we understand that all Scripture is important to us, Lord. Lord, let us not pick and choose what it is that we want to live by, Lord. But let us always understand that, that each and every each and every tittle of your, of your Holy Word is important to us, Lord. Lord, let us uh, allow it to... To strengthen us, let us allow it to 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 guide us. Let us allow it to to enrich us and to make us the people that you want us to be, Lord. Lord, you are amazing and you are perfect. You do these things. You you put these 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 words in front of us, Lord, so that we may read them, so that we may internalize them, so that we may apply them, and that we may abide in you, Lord. Let us abide in you, Lord. We pray protection on on this household and every household who is who is listening every household in our congregation. Lord, we pray that you just continue to keep us and preserve us so that we may be able to, to carry on and do the things that you want us to do, Lord. Keep us good in health. Keep us good in, in, in our spirit. Keep us good in our heart. Keep us good in our, in, our, in our minds, Lord. Keep us good in all ways because we know that your creation is good, Lord. Lord, let us turn away from the things that draw us away from you, Lord, and understand that your way does not always match up with the world's, Lord, and that there is a sacrifice to be made on our part, Lord. All things that are worth having, they, they do cost, Lord, and, and the relationship with you does not come without a price, Lord. We love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. All right, so uh, announcements for this week. Uh, Saturday, we have the laundry ministry. Uh, we'll be at... Uh, the Secret Squirrel Laundromat at noon. It's a great ministry. I would love to see a great turnout for that. Um, Sunday, we are back in the church. And we have service at uh, 11 a.m. It'll be a great time. Great time of coming back together. Uh, maybe see some people you haven't seen in a couple weeks. Um, the following week... We will be doing our uh, Bible study on Wednesday as usual, but we will be from a new locale. So this is the last Bible study from this office. So uh, kind of a bittersweet day. But um, as we talked about last time, as we leave Exodus and we get into Numbers, we see that Exodus is God putting his plan in motion. He's removing the people of uh Israel and releasing them from the bondage of Egypt, putting them into a place where they can prosper, moving them into the land that he promised Abraham through the Abrahamic covenant. Um, and then as we roll into numbers, we see the carrying out of this plan and we see the, the beginning of the fulfillment of this plan. Now in the first chapter, it was a census. It was a census of the people of Israel, and we saw that, uh, that the number of just the fighting age men, minus the Levites, was 603,550. So God has, has, has come through on the first part of the Abrahamic covenant, which was the promise of seed. He, he delivered on, on multiplying Abraham greatly, and, um, you know, it's it's a testament to to what we need to keep in mind. Um, just because we know that God has promised us something, just because we know that something is 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 coming from God and that God wants uh, certain things for us, does not mean that they they happen immediately. Um, we have become such an immediate gratification society. Um, it, it's 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 it, it's it's infuriating at times it's sad at times um there are times that we just have to wait to receive the blessing that god wants us to receive so that we can receive it the way that he wants us to receive it um then we see that uh, they were brought into the land or brought to the land and, and they sent spies out and all but two came back with a bad report uh they were not faithful that god was going to fill this fulfill this promise 
So they, they wandered the wilderness for 40 years. Now, as I said, numbers, we're getting into the structure and into the fulfillment of that promise. So we're going to see some of the travel and we're going to see some of the fulfillment and, uh, and we'll be ready for them to, to come into the land uh, when we get into Judges. But Numbers, numbers is, is, is the, the final part that's starting to, to get them into that place of fulfillment. And then Deuteronomy, it, it, what it will do is it will, it will round out the Pentateuch and it will bring everything and uh, reiterate everything so that uh, we go into Joshua with the mindset of what had happened. This chapter in particular, it talks about the arrangement of the camp. Now, as I said, these are things that, that we don't think about. These are things that we, we read flippantly and we don't necessarily uh, internalize and don't necessarily look at the, the life application for today. But, but these words, these instructions, they can enrich our lives greatly if we pay attention to what the author is actually putting here under the direction of God. Because we have to remember that all scripture is written under the inspiration of God, by men. So Moses wrote this, and in chapter 2, starting with verse 1, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, The people of Israel shall camp, each by his own standard, with the banners of their father's houses. So we see again, own standard. We saw that in the previous chapter. So we, we know that there is a, a society forming. We know that there are the haves and the have-nots. And each shall camp by their standard. But each camp shall, shall camp under the banners of their father's houses. Now, these banners were representative of the 12 tribes. And they were all different colors. And they matched the colors of the stones in the breastplate of the priest that coincided with that tribe. So... Um, you know, that's just a, a little tidbit of information. Um, and what we're going to see is we're going to see that they're divided up into four camps. And how they're divided up into the four camps is pretty interesting. And uh, we'll, we'll jump right into it. And, uh, and you know, if you see something that, uh, that you notice, feel free to, to put it on there. And, uh, and, and we'll discuss it as we go. Um, also, any questions would be appreciated. Um, we love questions. Questions mean that you're listening. Questions mean that you're, you're desiring to, uh, to, uh, to receive answers, that you're desiring to dig deeper into God's Word. So, um, verse 3 says, Those to camp on the east side towards the sunrise shall be of the standard of the camp of Judah by their companies. The chief of the people of Judah... Nashon, the son of Amenadab, his company being 74,600, matches the census. Those who camp next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of the people of Issachar being Nathaniel, the son of Zohar, his company listed being 54,400, the tribe of Zebulun, the chief of the people of Zebulun being Elab, the son of Helon. His company being listed at 50, 57,400. And those listed of the camp of Judah by their companies were 186,400. They shall set out first on the march. So what we see here is we see that the Lord is putting three of the tribes under the banner of one tribe. So Judah is the leader of the first group out. Now, what's so great about this is we discussed Judah. We discussed what happened with Reuben. We discussed what happened with Simeon. We discussed what happened with Levi. And then Judah, who owned his sins, Judah, who was repentant for his sin, Judah is where the Christ comes from. Judah is going to lead the procession when they come in and out. And when I say procession, when they travel, when they pick up, they are going to travel and Judah is going to lead the way. Now, the other thing that I want 
to uh, everyone to, to, to see here is uh, it says that they shall camp facing the tent of meeting on every side. So they've got um, east, south, west, and north. And that's the order that they're listed in right here. That's the way that they'll come out. But in the center of everything is the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting is where God came to speak to Moses. The tent of meeting is where God would come and reside when he spoke. So we see that the, the tribes are going to be surrounding God with God in the center. And they will all be facing God. And Judah will be the head. It's amazing once we, we, we look at this and see how this is supposed to be. And we see that God's plan is actually laid out right in front of us, right here at the very beginning. So then we get on to, to, to verse 10. And it says, On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben. So this will be Reuben. They'll be under the banner of Reuben. And there will be three tribes, Reuben and two other tribes. So it's Judah and then Reuben. Now Reuben, had he been repentant, Reuben, had he uh, followed uh, the instructions of God, Reuben, had he done what he was supposed to, would have been the head. Because he was the eldest. But instead of being in first slot, he moves into second slot. And it says, By their companies, the chief of the people of Reuben, being Elazur, the son of Shadur, his company listed being 46,500. And those who came next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon. The chief of the people of Simeon being Shemiel, the son of Zereshadai, his company being listed at 59,300. Then the tribe of Gad, the chief of the people of Gad, being Elaspha, uh, Elaspha, the son of Reuel, his company being listed at 45,650. All those listed in the camp of Reuben by their companies were 151,450. They shall set out second. So they're, they're very, he's very specific in giving his orders for Israel. Judah is first. Reuben is second. And see who's in there with Reuben? Simeon is in there with Reuben. And so when they camp, they're going to camp, and they're going to camp according to their tribes, and they're going to be on the south side facing in at the tent of meeting. So we've got the east side and the south side facing in, looking at the tent of meeting. So they their eyes are on the Lord. Definitely, definitely, definitely a, a, a tenet that we can pull from the scripture and, and keep with us is that in all aspects of our lives, because all aspects of their lives took place in this way. They were either traveling or they were camping. And when they were camping, their eyes were on the Lord. And when they were, when they were, when they were traveling, they were traveling with the Lord. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. It says in verse 18, it says, On the west side shall be the standard of the tribe of Ephraim. By their companies, the chief of the people of Ephraim, being Elishema, the son of Amihud, his company being listed at 40,500. And next to him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, the chief of the people of Manasseh being Gamaliel, the son of Petazur. His company listed being 32,200. The tribe of Benjamin, the chief of the people of Benjamin, being Abadan, the son of Gedoni. His company as listed being 35,400. All those listed by the camp of Ephraim by their companies were 108,100. They shall set out third on the march. So here we see Ephraim, the son of Joseph, 
uh, is represented, and they will be going out third. And um, so we see first, Judah, second, Reuben, third, Joseph. Joseph being third, and uh, so we see the structure of, of how God is, 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 is rolling these people out. And, um, and we, we, know from, uh, we know from Genesis how loyal and faithful uh, Joseph was. We know that Joseph was, was, was so loved by God that he got a double portion. As opposed to being a tribe of Joseph, his children, his two sons, each of them got a tribe. So there was no tribe of Joseph and there is no tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi is actually the tribe of priests. So we see, um, we see that. And also in here, um, notice that in the grouping here is the tribe of Benjamin, which is the youngest of Rachel's sons, who is Joseph's mother. So, um, so, so he is honored as well. Then in verse 25, it says, On the north side shall be the standard of the camp of Dan by their companies, the chief of the people of Dan, being Ahazar, the son of Amush Adadai. His company being listed as 62,700. Those camp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher, the chief of the people of Asher, being Pejil, the son of Okaram, his company is being listed 41,500. Nefalti, the chief of the people of Nefalti, shall be Ahira, the son of Enan, his company shall be listed at 53,400. All those listed in the camp of Dan were 157,600. They shall set out last by the Standard. So then the tribe of Dan is last. And as they come into the promised land, what we find is we find that Dan, Dan does not get much of a portion. And Dan is, is somewhat of a nomadic tribe, even when they come into the promised land. So we're not only seeing how God wants it laid out. We are seeing some prophecies laid out before us as we see how these are going to be. And it says in verse 32, These are the people of Israel as listed by their father's houses. All those listed by the camps of their companies were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus did the people of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they camped by their standards and so they set out each one in his clan according to the, his father's house. Now, when they traveled, so they got on the south. <clears throat> excuse me. On the south, they've got the, the tribe of Judah. I'm sorry. On the east, they've got the tribe of Judah. On the south, they've got the tribe of Reuben. On the west, they've got Ephraim. And on the north, they've got Dan. And they're, they're surrounding this now when they get up and they move they will go Judah Reuben tent of meeting in the middle Ephraim Dan so as they travel they are being they are they are protecting the tent of meeting as God is protecting them um, as they travel and the Levites are over the tent of meeting, and each and every tribe has their responsibilities as far as the tabernacle goes. So, as we see this laid out, we see that God is, 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 is organizing the people. We can take that away from, from, from this scripture. We know that God wants us to be organized. We know that God is a God of organization. God is a God of order. So, this is the order that he wants it to be in. We see that, uh, that, that God has it grouped the way that he wants it to be, and he sees that, that God wants to be the center of each and everything that they do. God is always at the center when they're camping. 
The tent of meeting is in the middle. When they're traveling, the tent of meeting is in the middle. God is always with them. God is with them regardless. And he is the center of all things Israel coming into the promised land. Now, the other thing that I want to see, and, and I mean, if we don't have questions, we're, we're going to we're going to keep it short, I guess, and, and, and close it out. But um, we see, again, a, a, a thread that ran through Exodus that's running into Numbers, which is God is giving specific instructions to be carried out specifically by the people of Israel. Now, this is something that Israel was obedient in. This is something that they did in accordance to God's word. And it says, according to all the Lord commanded Moses, so they camped by the standard, so they set out each one in his clan according to his father's house. So God told them to do it a certain way. They did that. And eventually we will see that, uh, that, that the promise is fulfilled. So we're seeing the setup and we're seeing the go. Next week we're going to... Um, delve more into the sons of Aaron and the duties of the Levites as far as his traveling, um, also into the redemption of the firstborn. Um, do we have any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns about what we went over today? If we don't have anything, let's uh, close out in prayer. Um, we pray that you, uh, special prayer request, uh, pray that you uh, be with our friend Holly. She is uh, she's sick. We don't know what it is, but uh, we just pray that, that she is healed. We pray that this household, like I said, remains healthy, remains strong. I pray that, pray that you be with Nikki and myself. Uh, we are moving tomorrow. So uh, we've been in this house for six years and uh you know it's it's we're, we're excited but at the same time there's a lot of memories here there's a lot of love here um so uh be in prayer for that be in prayer for our guys uh be in prayer for for ricky and craig and joey and gary uh they are they are carrying the torch and uh and doing what they're supposed to do as far as leading these young men uh, be in prayer for Gary and his health. Uh, he's doing well, but uh, he has a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so we want to be in prayer for him. Uh, be in prayer for Teresa. Um, um, and uh, just be in prayer for each other. Let's, let's all be in prayer for each other because the, the, the prayers that we pray are important. And, uh, and we need to be aware that uh, when we pray for someone, we are praying out of a place of love. So um, let's pray for all those that need healing. Let's pray for our homeless. Let's pray, pray for our widowed and our afflicted. And um, with that, let's close out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the, the instructions that you have laid before us, Lord. Lord, may we learn to do as you instructed the Israelites. May we learn to keep you at the center of all things, Lord. Whether we be moving or whether we be resting, Lord, may we, may we keep you at the heart of all things, Lord. Lord, we fall short and we know it. Lord, we pray that you forgive us, Lord. Lord, we come to you as a people in repentance, understanding that, uh, that we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for, yet sometimes we can't even get out of our own ways, Lord. Lord, we pray that we learn from the mistakes that we make. We pray that we grow from them, Lord, and we pray that we become the men and women that you want us to be, Lord. Lord, strengthen us during this time while our country and while this world is in turmoil, Lord. Let us always remember that you are that place of peace, Lord. And as we put you at the center of our lives, that peace will radiate through us as your people, Lord. And Lord, more people will be touched by you through the peace that they see that we have received, Lord. Lord, let us be diligent in our duties as evangelists. Let us be diligent in our duties as, as, as moral and ethical people, Lord. And let us always be aware that, that we are representatives of you, Lord. May we be the ambassadors of Jesus Christ that you've commanded us to be. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Well, I pray that everyone has a great night, and uh, I look forward to seeing everyone in person 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday. 
We are going to praise. We are going to worship. We are going to bring forth the word. It is going to be a party. And uh, can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? I may not be able to get an amen until I... Now I may be able to get an amen. y'all have a blessed day and uh, I will see some of y'all tomorrow and those that I don't see tomorrow Lord willing I will see you this weekend and uh, I'm looking forward to it. God bless you all.